surveillance equipment to a secret branch of the Egyptian government. Cairo paid millions of dollars for surveillance equipment designed to protect the president, but it could also be used to spy on the public. The revelation has led to calls for European governments to come clean about corporate dealings with Egypt. Lawrence Lee reports. These documents obtained by Privacy International cast a new light on the length the CC government and the Mubarak one before have gone to in order to protect themselves. They demonstrate the existence of a secret arm of state called the Technical Research Department, or TRD. Documents also show that the Finnish-German multinational Nokia Siemens has sold equipment to the TRD, capable of enabling the security services to conduct mass surveillance, a monitoring centre, equipment to listen to the landlines and mobile phones of the public at large. The other one with the biggest budget in Egypt uh, for surveillance technologies, and the other one who are always looking for the, the next new technology, the sort of uh, more uh, high-tech, up-to-date technologies to conduct surveillance. So, of course, from the perspective of uh, Western companies that are trying to sell new products, the TRD is the obvious, uh, the obvious customer. The sales, the surveillance they enable, date back to before 2011, when Hosni Mubarak was ousted as president, suggesting that they weren't only facilitated to help clamp down on dissent after the Arab Spring. But it does appear all the technology has proved useful to the current government. This audio clip lifted from a mobile phone call is between the son of the jailed former president Mohamed Morsi and close friend Gahad Haddad, in which they discuss what to do after hundreds of protesters were killed by Egypt's security services in 2013. The clip was played on Egyptian television. Gahad and his father were arrested and jailed. Gahad's brother is convinced the surveillance technology helped the state to portray them and thousands of others as traitors. They try to, 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 take, to log into their phones, they try to take personal information from there. Uh, it's, it's, and now it, it becomes someone like uh, for many activists now who, is, uh, who are in Egypt and trying to uh, work in the fields of human rights, for example, or work in the fields of uh, uh, trying to uh, any civil society actions. They, they have to take uh, extreme security precautions because they know that the security services want to have surveillance on them. You have to hack your target. This revelation comes after an Italian surveillance company called Hacking Team was itself hacked and thousands of documents put in the public domain. Hacking Team had been selling the Egyptian government malware to allow security teams to control people's electronic devices. No European companies can export this sort of surveillance equipment to Egypt without the permission of their governments. A group of European politicians will now call on Germany and Italy to explain why they think these sales to Egypt were appropriate. We have a responsibility for our own companies here in Europe and those companies themselves accept that they're responsible for the United Nations guiding principles on business and human rights. And I have to say in this instance it's very clear to me that those guidelines are being breached and these exports are wrong. Hacking team pointed out that the sales are legal and that Western governments also sell warplanes and missiles to Egypt. It also claimed the surveillance equipment could help the West's fight against terrorism. Siemens said it had sold a subsidiary in 2013 and therefore couldn't comment. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera. South Africans are braced for tax rises as the government...